good day fairies so i'm going to yeah finally do my succulent vlog because it's not really a vlog it's like a documentation since i started you know documenting taking videos yeah when i first started so i started collecting succulents back in july 2019 yeah i have effing notes because you know my memory is not that good that's why i like documenting stuff because i get to look back on the photos the videos that i've taken so i know the date and everything okay i got my first succulent as a souvenir in one of my events from a client it is it is the rose cabbage yeah it's my very first succulent I am not really into plants but yeah I posted it on my IG story and one of my friends um said that I should propagate it. So yeah the rest is history because YouTube won't stop recommending videos about succulent from basic how to um what else to arrangement and I really do like the arrangement thing because they're effing beautiful. So yeah next is Aha, uh -huh. until my collection grow, I got deeper into succulents where I learned that there are hybrids. You can, when one succulent um, blooms and another one blooms at the same time, you can pollinate them and hope that the seed, I don't know if the seed or whatsoever, will be the hybrid of the two, the combination of the two. So yeah, um, Facebook and everything... Yeah, I saw I I joined Facebook group about succulents and I saw you know Korean succulents hybrid and everything like that so I I really like the hybrid they're so I think it especially the Korean ones so well it if it's rare it's expensive so I said to myself before <clears throat> before I get to have a rare one i need to take care of my common one so yeah because it's epic expensive i don't want it to just die so aha uh -huh. things that i've learned collecting my commons and taking care of them is first is sun exposure is effing essential especially if you want them to be sun stress that's what they call it when you want them to change color not all changes color but most of them some of most or whatsoever um i have this adult it's effing green it turned to yellow orange and reddish and same with Fred Ives, it changes color when exposed to full sun. What else? A orchard doesn't change, it stays green. Uh, it, it only like lighter green to dark green. When indoors, dark green. When exposed to full sun, it just got lighter green, but still green. Uh -huh, my rose cabbage. Um, when kept indoors or low light, um, it's effing green. And when it is exposed to full sun, the tips or the lining becomes reddish. And I really like that about my rose cabbage. That's my very first succulent. And then there's my jelly bean. Uh, uh, what you call that? Uh, Rubiticum, like that, the scientific name. Uh, it is also green and turns reddish tips if exposed to full sun. And what else? Aha. Uh -huh. Watering can be done once a month or so because they're good at storing water like cactus. They're like cactus. La. Yeah. You don't need to water them daily. It depends on the climate also. If you're keeping keeping them indoors in low light, you know, um, not that exposed to sun that much, you can water them once a month. So you need to monitor because succulents can easily be overwatered. They just absorb water until they effing, you know, be overwatered. And their waters, uh, plant cells. I don't know water cells. Plant cells uh, explode. That's when they become overwatered. So yeah, just Google it, YouTube it. You can see that. And what else? 
Yeah, I do have a hawarcha and kalancho that I noticed like damp soil. Um, not all succulents like damp soil, but my kalancho, hawarcha, and my jelly bean likes damp soil. They thrive there. They don't easily, you know, uh, what you call that, rot in water. But yeah, some of them really rot in water. What else? Aha, acclimation is another important thing, thing because if the succulent tribe on a shaded and you suddenly put it on full sun, it definitely have sunburns and wither to death. I have succulent like that. Um, it was given to me, the small one. I think uh, because it's from Baguio, it is in a shaded park. I don't shaded part. I'm not sure, but I put it outside immediately and it is just small. So if you're going to put something outside, it should be a mother plant or you should acclimate it first because I have my topsy-turvy. It is small but yeah, I slowly acclimated it on full sun until yeah, it's full sun outside. It's still small now but yeah, I didn't die. Unlike the other one, I have the polydonis and I forgot the other name. I forgot the name of the other one that died because I immediately put it outside. So yeah and yes i do have a succulent that over and under watering or too much or no sun exposure at all i used to keep my succulent indoors but i don't like how etulated yeah i first i kept them indoors because you know i'm so i'm too afraid if they're going to die outside because you know rain they should um from my understanding you shouldn't water them and well, you cannot control the weather when will it rain. So, I've kept them indoors. But, yeah. They become etulated, especially my Adolfi. Effing longer, not compact at all. Um, same with my jelly bean. And, uh -huh. now, I put them outside. How do I keep the water at bay? Because you cannot control the rain effing rain so i my soil mix become around 90 percent rocks the mixture of lava rock and pumice 10 percent is soil um part of the 10 percent of the soil is my paper cuttings yeah so <clears throat> and some compost like that but then again for my jelly bean and succulents that like damp soil, I make it 30% soil so they uh, retain more water. But for my black greens and others that, does, that rot easily, I only put 10% soil and the rest is 90% rocks. So the drainage, the water wouldn't retain that much. much. And... Your pot should be, you know, have many holes. And that's it. Um, as you can see, I'm putting clips here of my documentation about my succulents. I started uh, July 2019. It's not been a year because it's all. It's just January 25. Yeah, that's what I learned. And the really most important thing that I learned... Um, just leave them be don't um put too much effort on them they will effing thrive oh recently what ash fall we have ash fall on january 12 i gathered ash fall and put effing on my succulents on january 13 the morning and i some people said it, it's toxic but yeah i already put the ash fall so i said oh my what will happen with will my succulents die but after a week it's already 25 now the effing tribe some of my succulents effing grow bigger especially my small ones i'm going to put the picture and my San Siberia leaf it's only a leaf have two babies yeah as you can see what else i uh, have no effing succulent die on the ash fall there all effing healthy i thought they're going to be you know poison or whatsoever because people say it is toxic but yeah ashfall from taal is a fertilizer according to some people so yeah 
what else um since i want to do arrangement i will be attending a wedding and decided to create a small arrangement as a gift yeah you can see the picture what um it contains five types of plants a cactus sansevieria howard yeah the small ones and painted lady and what else the other one rose cabbage yeah my effing hawartia and rose cabbage have so many effing babies my rose cabbage have babies underneath her and yes that's another thing you should check because babies will die if you should repot them or put them don't um, bury them on the soil that lower because you know for the small babies to live because sometimes if you bury them below um the babies will be you know exposed to water and will effing die due to prolonged water exposure and yeah i hope that i will definitely have a rare one my very um not that rare but my um most of i have 15 types of succulent there um my most um, uncommon i think is the pearl nun verg oh my gosh the name is so cute it's so effing pink so yeah it's still acclimating i think because the first time i got that is effing big and it started withering the leaves there but it's normal because they're trying to what you call that uh they're trying to fit in <laughs> on the weather there so weather here on antipolo so they're trying to acclimate so that's normal and yeah good drainage sun exposure that's all they need and you don't to need to water them effing that regular you just can leave them but you need to check especially for rose like rose cabbage and jelly bean and how are you that like damp soil i sorry yeah rose cabbage really likes damp soil like it easily withers down the leaves dry effing dry that fast if not given enough water but yeah it's already a mother plant when it is already a mother plant you don't need to give attention that much to it it will effing thrive so but you need to check um at least once a month but for the babies for the small one you need to check them around once a week yeah that's all so i'm hoping i will expand my collection and have a korean one soon and yeah do more arrangement in the future <laughs> Yeah.